Welcome to the Eagles tonight. I'm hearing a song in my heart right now from glory to glory. He's changing us. That we're becoming more and more like Him. And that's our hearts, isn't it? Hallelujah. So wonderful to have you tune in and join us again tonight as we listen to his word, as we begin to get fueled in the word, and then that we work together with the Holy Spirit, that God's will will be done in the earth through our prayer tonight as it is in heaven. So, Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you, Father, right now that you're God in us, guide in us, that you're such a great shepherd in our lives. Oh, we thank you for shepherding our hearts, shepherding our lives. We thank you that your word says you never leave us, you never forsake us. And we praise you, Father. That's our confidence that no matter where we go, where we are, that we know we're always safe in you. We honor you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for his presence in our lives. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to become more and more sensitive to, to what you're wanting to do in each of these meetings. Help our ears to hear sounds from heaven and our eyes to see what God is wanting and requiring of us to see in the Word tonight. We honor you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. You know, last week we had a look at knowing God. Something that the Lord dropped into my spirit. Of course, I went, I shared with you last week how I went to that song by Matthew Ward, Knowing You, Jesus, Knowing You. And um, I felt that the Lord wanted us to share that about knowing him. And again, you know, it comes back to something I've shared quite a lot over the years. You can't trust someone you don't know. And the purpose of spending time in the word is to really get to know God and allow that word to start to change us. You know, that change starts inside of us and we're being changed from glory to glory. We want to sound more like him. We want to look more like him. We want to respond in life to things the way that he would in the name of Jesus. And so the key is knowing him. Not just knowing about him, but knowing him. And that's where our confidence comes from. You know, I know really when Pastor John pulls a look at me, I know exactly what he's saying without him speaking a word. I know if it's we're ready to go or, you know, cut that short, Eileen. I, I know those looks from him because we're intimate together. I, and so I've spent time in close fellowship with him. So I can, I know him. I know how he's going to re respond to certain things. And as he is, even with me and even with close friends, you know, a, a certain amount with him. And that's what God wants us to know him. Your confidence that God is going to help you in situations of life comes out of knowing him. And so that's really important in our life. In Daniel 11, 32, and I shared that with you last week, people who know their God will be strong and do exploits. And then again in John 17, let's go back to that again. I hope by these, these couple of weeks that we've been in it that these scriptures are starting to take up residence on the inside of us. There's something now that we can recall very easy. 
In John 17 and verse 3 says, and this is eternal life. It means to know, perceive, recognize, become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God. And likewise, to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah whom you have sent. The, and he said, didn't he, in, in another translation, this is life. What is life to know him as the only true God? And then in 2 Timothy 1.12, he says this, Paul said this, for I know in whom, I want you to underline that, in whom I have believed. I, I know in whom I have believed. Exodus 33 and verse 13 says that I might know you more deeply. And so, you know, that, that's got to start being the thing in our heart. You know, it's, you know, sometimes people think, well, if I pray long enough, I'll get God to do this. No, f praying, our fellowship is to fellowship with him. Read in the word and Father, as we read it, speak to me, show me things that you're wanting me to see. Help me when I'm praying, Father, to hear sounds. Help me to hear what you're saying for this day, for this hour. Fellowshipping with him is getting to know him. Glory be to God. Not just thinking, well, if I pray an hour, God will do this. If I pray five hours, oh, God will really do it. It's not about that. You're, 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 it's about fellowshipping with the Father. Remember in the beginning when God created Adam and Eve, he made them for fellowship. He wanted fellowship. And he still wants that fellowship with us today. Hallelujah, that he's not the last thought in our lives. You know, Paul said this, and think about the Apostle Paul. I thought about him quite a lot. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote so much in the New Testament, and you would say that he would have known the Father, he would have known God. But look at what he said, my main purpose is that I might know him. My determined purpose, he says, is that I might know him. He said, this is what I treasure, what I pursue more than anything else is to know him. Not know about him, but know him. I remember reading something Billy Graham said. Someone asked him, Billy, if you had your time all over again, would there be anything that you would change? And he said, yes, I would spend more time in prayer and fellowship and in reading my word. I would give more of my time to that, to fellowship with God. And that's really important in our life because you get to know him. You know how he responds to things. You're starting to know how he thinks about things. You know what it does? It builds a confidence and assurance in you that when you're, you're reaching out for help in an area because you know him, you know how he's going to respond. You know what he's going to do in your life. And again, you know, I shared that song with you last week. I don't know if you've all had an opportunity to listen to that. It's Matthew Ward. You can get it on YouTube and it's knowing you, Jesus. And it's just such a beautiful song that stares your heart, knowing you, Jesus, knowing you. Oh, I mean, when he begins to sing that, some mornings, you know, I put that on and that's it. I, I've slipped somewhere in the presence of God. It's such a, a beautiful song that the Lord gave him to sing. And, you know, the more that you get to know him, the more like him you become. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we could ask a question tonight. Who lived on earth and knew the Father the best? Who lived on earth and knew the Father the best? Jesus. How much like the Father was Jesus? Well, the Bible says that he was the express image of the Father. In fact, one translation says in Hebrews 1.3 that the sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature. He is the mirror image. 
<laughs> I really like that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then in John 14 and verse 8, Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Philip, have you known me so long, been with me so long, and you do not know the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You have seen the Father. Glory be to God. And he's saying, because I talk like him, I act like him. And you know, you and I each day are supposed to be changing to become more and more and more like him. Our response is to be more like him, that we talk more like him. Glory to God. And what's going to help us in that change from the inside out is the giving ourselves, spending time in the word and looking in the gospels, reading the gospels, what Jesus said, how he responded, what he did. It reading that, spending time in the word until we get so familiar with everything Jesus said and did. Until we face something in our life and right away the first thing we think is how would he respond to this? How would he act in this situation? You know, if, if I burn Pastor John's toast, how would he how would Jesus react if I burnt his toast? Well, that's how Pastor John needs to learn to react. Amen. We, he's still working on it, though. I hope you're praying for him. <laughs> but, but even for me, you know, if something's not working out, my first thought should be, would, how, how would Jesus respond to this situation? How would he act in this situation? And that begins to bring a change into our life. You know, we get to where we're talking more like him, acting the way he would. And the key actions that we've seen even last week in his life was love and mercy. And we need, they, they're very strong keys that need to be in our life. The mercy of God and the love of God, they need to be seen and experienced and outworked in our lives. And what begins to happen in our lives, you know, the more that you begin to spend time in the Word, the more time that you give to fellowship in with the Father, what begins to happen is your faith automatically begins to rise. Hallelujah. And when your faith begins to rise, what are the products of your faith rising? There's a boldness, there's a confidence. You know, do you have a boldness that God hears you when you pray? Do you believe he hears you? And do you believe that because you know that, you know that you know that you know that, that he will answer you in that situation? You know, I spend so much time in Psalm 91, speaking it, reading it, thinking about it, that, you know, I, I, it automatically, you know, I call on you, Father, in this situation. You said you'd be with me. You said you'd deliver me. So I th I'm looking for your help, your deliverance in this, because I trust you. I know you, and I know your word, and I know that you are faithful to that word. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes when I've been reaching out to him, something doesn't come up in my heart straight away. It could be in that day, in that afternoon, but God does it. Something's dropped there. You know that, that you go, wow, that's the answer. You know, or you start, I, for me, I start humming a song or singing a song. And I've learned to listen to the songs that I start picking up. Because sometimes in those songs, God is conveying a message to you. He's speaking to you through it. You know, we shouldn't take that lightly. You know, when you're praying, you're pondering on God and these songs start coming up. You know, we need to be listening to them because he, the Holy Spirit can be using them to convey something to our hearts. So as we begin to do that, you know, spending time, change happens in us and we begin to, to change. 
You know that song from glory to glory, he's changing me, he's changing me. And I'm sure Pastor John's really excited that he's been changing me. <laughs> glory to God. And he's putting up his hands in the air there. The Bible says, you know, how can two walk together unless they agree? You can't. You know, and if you and God agree about things, guess what? You and the devil are not going to agree. Isn't that right? You're walking with God. And the key, you know, to knowing someone is, is the fellowship with him. I love fellowship with the Father. I do. I love to spend time with the Father. But do you know, since I've fallen in love with Jesus, since I've fallen in love with his word, guess what? I love church. I love the fellowship with the brethren. I can hardly wait. I love to get into church. I love it when they're practicing all the songs. I love it in the prayer room. I love it when we're ministering. I just love being around the people of God because there's a different language in that house and it's so wonderful to be there. Everything, things in your life change. You know, when Pastor John and I got born again, we'd come out of the disco era <laughs> oh yes we did you know pastor john could dance just as well as john travolta we came out of that scene and that had been a part of our life for a long time but it was strange you know as we were learning and we didn't understand everything we were reading but as we were growing and learning some things all of a sudden we were looking into things that we'd that we'd done for years and years and all of a sudden it was like why would we do that there's no value in that what what can you get out of doing those things and we began to change and the the closer we're walking with the father we began to change till things just dropped off our life we didn't want to be a part of that anymore it wasn't we didn't want to reach out to the people but it was just we didn't want to be doing that and we were if we were going from glory to glory it, we were changing our talk started to change and things that we wanted started to change glory to God we wanted to be a church we wanted a Bible our pastor had this big black King James Bible and we wanted one we figured that's the look you've got to have and we wanted the Bible we began to change and it was a shock to people around us because you know to see that change well you are because you're fellowshipping with him and I fell in love with Jesus when I got born again I'm telling you I got these records from a, a, um, a, a group that we went to see, Silverwind, and they were a real ministry group. And I would play that every morning before I went to work. And some mornings I would stand there, I mean, for an hour worshiping God and crying. God, I don't want to go to work. I want to stay here all day and do this. I was falling deeper and deeper and deeper in love with God till all the things that used to captivate me started dropping off. I was being changed. My husband was being changed. Our kids began to get changed. And that's what happens. The closer that you walk with someone, you become more and more like them. And you can see that even out in the world. You'll see groups of girls walking out, uh, out together to the shops and they've all got, you know, the white runners, the jeans, the little top. They've all got the same things because who they're with is how they're dressing and how they're acting. And it's no different with God. Who you're with begins to affect how you dress, how you speak, how you act. And God wants that because you become more of a visible representation of an invisible God in the earth. Hallelujah. Didn't Jesus say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you listen to me talk, you can hear the Father. Well, we begin to change by who we're spending the most time with. Glory to God. And so the key is knowing him and fellowshipping with him. And the greatest key to faith is knowing God. That's where your confidence comes from. That's where your assurance comes from. I knew my goodness as a young child, if I ran to my mom, she'd get us out of 
all the trouble. If, even if we got ourselves into it, it would never be our fault. She'd get us out of it. Her arms would be around. My mum was always like that, very protective of us all. And we were never wrong. Everyone else was. <laughs> you know, she was like that. But glory to God, I knew my mum's responses. So I knew when we could go to her, glory to God. And God wants you to be like that with him, walking with him, enjoying walking with him, not doing things that you've got to do, doing things that you want to do. Reading that word because I want to see you in this word. I want to hear you talk. I want to sound from heaven when I hear, read this word. When I begin to fellowship with you, Father, I thank you that as I draw close to you. You're drawing close to me. Glory to God. That's what you said. Hallelujah. And knowing him, it's not just knowing about his acts, but knowing him because you'll know his character, his responses. Glory to God. Knowing how he will respond. And that's where trust is built. You see, if you're only building on, on acts, you're going to question all the time, will he come through? But when you know the Father and you know that he loves you, that he's passionately in love with you, that he'll never leave you, never forsake you, he's not going to leave you in a hole trying to get out of it, that you know he's for you and not against you. When you're building that, you know how God's going to respond in every situation. You've got a confidence and a boldness. That's why Jesus had confidence confidence and boldness to do some of the things in the earth that he did. He knew the Father heard him when he prayed. And he knew when he went out and went out to do things, he knew the Father would flow through him in Jesus' name. When you know his character, you can have confidence in what he says. Can you say amen? I'll tell you, that's really good, you know. That will help us because we know him. In John 11, verses 41 to 44, remember Jesus looked up at the, at the Father and he said, thank you that you always hear me. Wow. Father, thank you that you always hear me. That when I draw close to you, you draw close to me. Thank you, Father, that when I call on you, you always answer me. You're with me. And Father, you deliver those and myself for whom I pray for. Thank you, Father. I do have a confidence in your love. Do you know something? When you fellowship with God, you're fellowshipping with love. He is love. He doesn't do love. He is love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Confidence, assurance, and boldness that we know that God hears us. Our hearts hungry to know him. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are scanning and looking to and fro for are in the earth for hearts like that. God loves hearts like that. And John 14, 21. Let's just go there. John chapter 14. Is this good tonight? I feel stirred in my heart tonight. Hallelujah. That I might know you. Here, yeah, John. It's after Luke, isn't it? John 14 and verse 21. I'm reading from the Amplified. And he says, the person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love him and show and reveal and manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Whoa, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, it's not just knowing principles. It's knowing the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we might know you in a whole new way. Whoa, Father, that we might know you. Oh, Lord, I pray even for our children, that should be our prayer, 
that our children might know you as the only true God and Jesus as the Christ, as the Son of the living God, that they might know the inheritance that you have for them, that they might know the exceeding greatness of your power, Father, as it works in them and on them and through them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just praise you tonight. We thank you that we can draw close to you and any time of the day or night and you draw close to us and we honor you we praise you we magnify you we glorify you father we want our lives to be an advertisement of your love of you father in the earth in Jesus name oh glory to God hallelujah the greatest fellowship you can have is with the Father. Getting to know him in fellowship, getting to know him in the word and knowing that he loves you. Do you know that's one of the biggest things that people need, knowing that God loves you. I've been doing healing meetings for maybe close to 30 years now. I was doing them every week. We do them once a month online and once a month live in church healing meetings. And you know, time and time again when we were doing those weekly meetings, when someone, you know, got something was diagnosed with a cancer or something, I had numerous people, that was what they said, doesn't God love me? And it's not a question of his love. We don't question his love. Do you know we had a lady come into our, and I'm sure I've shared it before, but I believe the Holy Ghost wants me to share it again. We had a lady come into the healing meeting and she had the most aggressive, aggressive cancer. And you outwardly, you could see that she was doing it really tough. I'm telling you, it was very aggressive. And she came in, do you know I was teaching <clears throat> that God loves us? I was teaching on I'm the one the Lord loves. And we were teaching simple things like, you know, seeing things that they would speak to us and say that God loves us. Hallelujah. Every time the sun comes up, we should say, wow, that sun came up because God loves me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we were teaching that. And, uh, you know, she didn't, she didn't come out for prayers. She didn't. I was aware that what she was facing, so personally I was praying for her. But, and she knew I was praying for her. And it, for the whole of that school term, which would have been a 10 weeks, that's all we taught on every week on the love of God. You know, she came up to me and she said, I think maybe three or four weeks in, she said, do you know what, just hearing that, has brought healing to my heart. All of a sudden, my heart is feeling still. Do you know that she got healed of that cancer? Just knowing that she was loved. That when that sun came up, that was saying, God loves me. Looking at a flower come bloom and looking at it and saying, wow, God loves me and allowing that to become a reality in your heart. She got healed of that cancer and is still walking free today. Glory be to God. Knowing God, fellowshipping with him, you're fellowshipping with love. Hallelujah. When I draw close to him, I'm drawing close. Wow. And I'm enveloped in his love, enveloped in his presence. God is love. Father, we just praise you and thank you and honor you. You know the Father who is love. Paul says, you know in whom you have believed. And when you know in whom you are believing, you, it produces a persuasion in your life. You know he hears you. You know he responds to you. But I want to kind of close this off saying this tonight. Paul didn't say this. Please listen to this. Paul did not say, I know in what I believe. He didn't say that, did he? 
What did Paul say? Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. And remember last week I shared with you, Paul says, my determined purpose is that I might know you. Glory to God. That's where your confidence comes, that no matter what you face in life, you know you can stand because you know him. You know he's not going to leave you or forsake you. You know he's going to deliver you. You know he's going to help you because you know in whom you believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Which is even tonight in closing, knowing you, Jesus, knowing you. There is no greater thing. You're my joy. You're the best. You are my righteousness, and I love you, Lord. I can honestly tell you, I so love the Lord. I love you, Lord, knowing you, Jesus. Father, I'm so thankful for the laborers that you sent around mine and John's life so that I got to know you. I'm so thankful, Father, for every person that came into our life and shared a little bit more in our life about you. I'm so thankful for all those people that prayed for us that we would slip from darkness and into the light and that not just knowing about you, Father, that we had every opportunity to know you. And I thank you for that. I thank you for every pastor that has ever taught yes, us, Father. that's <clears throat> ever prayed for us, that's ever helped us, mm. Father. All those precious men yeah. and women that you put around our life to make sure every step in our life was a step walking in you, mm. walking closer in you. I so appreciate yes. my first pastor, Lord, that gave of himself, gave of his love, gave of his heart, mm. gave in joy for our salvation, for our growth. Oh, Father, we're, we're so thankful. You know, tonight should be a night where we say, Father, I'm thankful. You know, when we have a day where we go, Father, thank you for loving us. Even when we didn't love you. Thank you for sending people <clears throat> into our lives. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for saving my mum and dad. <clears throat> Thank you for saving my husband's parents. Thank you for my church that I started my growth in you in. And thank you for entrusting John and I with your word and with the people that you so, so love. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so patient with all of us, Father. Oh, glory. Why don't you just take a little bit of time tonight and just begin to thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. God, we're so in love with you. Thank you. And we're so for very, love. very, very thank grateful you for, your kindness, your goodness. for everything you've done in our lives. Mm. You've that done. you've never left us, even in holes we created mm. ourselves. You've never left us in them. Mm. You've lifted us yes, out of them. Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for all the people that are praying with us tonight. Mm. Thank you for their each lives, Father. You, Praise Father. you for each and every one yes. of them that they are so important to you, so important to your plan in mm. the earth. Oh, Father, and mm. all the families that they represent, Father. Yeah, yeah, 
We thank you for every single one of them and that all of us together tonight are lifting our hands to you and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving to us, Lord. Oh, wow, that song's been coming to me for weeks. Thank you for giving to us, Lord. We're a life that's been changed. Thank you for Thank it. You, My life's been changed because yes. of your giving, Father, because of your love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I am so grateful for it. Yeah, so I praise you for it. We praise you. You know, we worthy, sing that worthy, songs worthy, over worthy, people worthy, who have Lord. done something so well in our life, and that's nice. But we should take that song sometimes and go, Thank you. For giving to mm. me, Lord, I'm a life that's been changed, that changed. because of your giving, yeah, because of yeah. your love, but because of your patience and God. your kindness and your mercy. Mm. Thank you. That I'm a life that's been changed. Yes, Lord. Thank oh, Father, you. praise you. Do you know yeah. that, John? Thank you. Thank you. you. For giving in, to the Lord. For giving to us, Lord. Yes. We're a life that's been us. changed. We are a life that was changed. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for, for giving, giving to us, Lord. Lord. We are lives that we have been changed. We are lives that were changed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the people that have linked with us along our paths, Father, and helped us, helped us get to the place that we're at today. Thank you for every person that that's come into our lives because of you, Father, and linked with us, took hold with us, prayed with us yes. for each and every one of us, yeah, those yeah, listening yeah. and us linked with yeah, us to yeah, get to where we yeah, are today. Yeah, Thank you so. for it, Father. We so appreciate yes, everything Lord. that you've done and appreciate everything all the precious done. people that you've brought into our lives. Barata, barata, barata. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what, church? When was the last time we just went to God and say, thank you for our church. Mm. Thank you for our local church. Mm. Thank you for the yeah. leaders. Thank you for the ministry of helps. Mm. Thank you for the praise and worship team. Yeah. Thank you for all the Thank children's you. ministers. Wow. Thank you for all the tithers and the givers yes, that Father have God. joined and linked with us yeah. so that your plan, your purpose yeah. can be outworked in yes, the earth. Father. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for linking ah, us together, yeah. Father. Oh. Oh, in the name of you, Jesus, thank you, thank you. Thank you for yes, giving to us, Lord. You. All these oh, precious yeah, musicians so and singers. Baruch thank you for yes. giving to us, Lord. Yes, All these Lord. beautiful ministry of helps. Ha, thank you yeah. for giving oh, to us, Lord. You, thank All these you. faithful children's yes. leaders. Thank mm. you, Father. Thank for giving to us all these faithful tithers and givers. Thank you for giving to yes. us, Lord. We're yes, churches Lord. that are being changed. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord, we're coming in to our fullness in Hallelujah. our church and in our life because of your ultimate giving. <laughs> And wow. we honor you tonight. We're we coming in we to our fullness in now in the you. name of Jesus because of your you giving, because of your faithfulness, because yes, of your mercy, because mm -hmm. of your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for every person that you've healed. Mm. Thank you for every person that you've touched. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Yato. Glory to God. Oh, ba ba ba. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving Mighty to God. us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you all for of them. Thank you. Mm. Glory to God. Glory yes, to God. You. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, glory. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank Lord. you for all the precious people mm. that give so much of themselves. Thank you. Praise you. Thank you. Praise you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, I want to thank God for you tonight, mm -hmm. for joining us every week and praying together mm. with us. Yeah. All the different Help prayer journeys nice. that wow. the Lord takes us into, yeah. they're all so Good. different. But I'm so thankful that you we join us yes, every we single week yes, in this you. Eagle's Prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not something that we put together. This is something that God put mm -hmm. together. And yeah, he put it so right. strong in this my purpose. husband's heart that we were to have this meeting every week mm -hmm. and pray together. And you mm -hmm. know, as we come together every week, all of us are being changed. All of us are growing. Mm, We're yeah. all growing. We're growing in the word. We're growing in, in, in our fellowship with each other, but we're growing together in our fellowship with him. And we're learning more and more together to work with the Holy Spirit mm. and to follow his guidance, his counsel, his wisdom in every meeting that we come together. Mm. So can I say something to you tonight? Thank you for giving to the Lord. And thank you for being with us at the Eagles mm. every single week. Mm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to you joining again next week. Hallelujah. You know, I feel in my spirit that the Lord's not finished. Because I feel very tender. So, you know, when we close the meeting doesn't mean that the Lord's finished. So just sit for a little while and see if there's more that he begins to impart to you and share with you because you're very important to God. Hallelujah. So we look forward to you joining us next week at the, at the Rhema Doncaster if you're in Melbourne at 10 a.m. And if not, Rhema Melbourne, Rhema Melbourne Online Church at 10 a.m. every week and Rhema Mill Park. Say glory to God. So you have a wonderful evening and a great weekend and we look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, God loves you. And those who wait on the Lord